Hello everyone, welcome back to Trilby's Notes. Continuing on, let's reattach the limbs. What do I have again? Right, arms, legs, and head. Okay, <laughs> what else would I have to reattach? No other parts are missing. Put, I guess it'd be use leg on, what did I call it, body? On torso? On dummy? Right leg on dummy? Oh god, what do, what do I call it? Mannequin? That's really hard to spell. Uh, how do I spell mannequin? It calls it a porcelain dummy. Use arm on dummy. Uh, use right leg on dummy? What the? F oh my god. Was I just not actually close enough? Maybe I wasn't close enough to it. Use right leg on dummy. Use leg on dummy. What the fuck? Attach leg to dummy. There we go. Jesus. Ah, oh, text interpreters. I replaced the left arm. I replaced... Oh, it's replacing everything. Okay. There we go. All together again. The body was intact. For reasons I couldn't explain, I sensed that something had changed back in the real world. What kind of ridiculous locking mechanism, mechanism is this? No kidding. You have to reattach the limbs of a porcelain dummy to unlock a door. Alright. Take my pills. Alright, I'm supposed to meet him on the roof. Where are you? And what is that? Oh, that's a note held down by a stone. The view of the island was spectacular, but most of the roof seemed to be sectioned off by a metal fence. And just about the only feature within reach was a piece of paper held down by a stone. Pick up paper. Clan Bronwyn Island, July 28th, AD 1501. A sturdy tree, this. It took, it took us from dawn to dusk, but we finally have it down. I'm tired, father. Twas indeed clever of us to investigate this island, eh, boy? I've never seen such a gigantic oak, nor do I expect to again. But its wood shall keep us in the business of carpentry for years to come. Father, look at those stones. Do you think there was once a house here? It matters not. Why must you always look everywhere, but at what matters? This is your... Father? Is something troubling you, father? Oh god. Uh... What did Boyle do next? Scream? Perhaps? <laughs> uh... I don't think I can st- oh wait, hold on. There's a stone down there, right? So I should perhaps pick it up? Throw a stone. I got his attention. Did I want his attention? Not really. Where am I? I must have shifted into the dark world during the vision. Wait, she's here. Trilby. Siphon? Oh, thank God. I thought I was all alone. What happened to you? I don't know. After you knocked me out in my room, I woke up and everything was like this. The hotel's ruined. There's blood everywhere. I saw this horrible man. Tall, thin, long black coat. You know him? Enough to know you're lucky to be alive. He didn't notice me, so I ran up here to hide. How did you get past the doll? What doll? Trilby, what the hell is going on? 
I told you what would happen if you followed me into the shadows. This isn't your problem. Take these. What are these? Tranquilizer pills. Take one. When you calm down, the hotel will go back to normal. Won't you need them? I don't need to run away anymore. Trilby, wait! Where are you going? I know enough now. I know where the wood came from. Perhaps I can find a way to end this. So I was right. The cursed wood came from Clan Bronwyn Island. But what good does that knowledge do me? Wait a second. I never got around to reading the letter I took from under the rock. Trilby, I'm very close to ending this. Meet me in the hotel basement. I must show you my discovery. Lankman. The other page was another of those religious papers. The Book of Victims, Victim 1, The Woodcutter. Yes, we've been going backwards in the order of victims, have we not? From the most recent to the oldest. I think I have an eyelash in my eye. God damn it, I hate that. Anyway. So it doesn't poke my corneas. Victim 1, The Woodcutter. The first of those against whom the prince sought vengeance was the woodcutter. He who had held the axe that first felled this tree, or the tree. The prince came to him and his son, and he struck the woodcutter down, and the woodcutter knew the name of the king. And the prince turned to the woodcutter's son, and he said, You I shall let live, for you are young, and are of the innocent, and that you may go among your people and tell them of what I will rot. And the woodcutter's son fled, and told all of what he had seen. But the men of technology are arrogant, and his words were unheeded. There's no going back now. I don't have any pills. To the basement, then. I should probably save it. bugs are gone. This is where he wanted to meet, no? Mm-hmm. Someone had dug a hole in the foundations large enough to admit a man. Is it this? Examine the hole. The hole seemed to lead into some kind of tunnel that gradually expanded into an underground cavern. Oh god. Okay. Go into the hole. Oh great. Oh yeah, nothing horrible is going to happen here. Is it switching between reality and the other world? Yes. Is this the tree? I was in some kind of cavern dug out of the rock beneath this hotel. It seemed to be in a constant state of flux, flitting back and forth between the real world and its dark twin. I was certain that the gigantic stump in the middle of the floor had something to do with this. Let's look at the stump. This was it. I was certain. The remains of the tree that Boyle and his father cut down. Its wood being later used to construct an inn. A harpist cord, a shipping grate, and an idol. I could feel that same scrabbling in my mind that I'd felt just before all my visions. 
And this time it was the stump itself that seemed to be beckoning me closer. Let's touch it. Glen Bronwyn Peninsula, July 28th, 55 BC, my god. Let's see if I can get that name correct. Cabadath? Let's go with that. Cabadath, a Celtic druid, awaits the return of his friend and colleague, Geldon, who brings news of the invasion of Anglesi by the Roman Suetonius Paulinus. Having, having fallen out of favor with his fellows for certain radical beliefs and activities, Cabadath lives in solitude in this remote forest clearing and prefers not to travel himself. Cabadath, Golden, you bring news? The foreigners have landed. They cannot be deterred by our sorcery. All is lost. Oh? Certain are you? They're making their way across the land, eliminating resistance. Even you, out here, will be brought down within days. I'm sorry, Cabadath. And the great Druze of Anglesi bow so easily to this brash foreign power? Do not hang your head yet, my friend. Perhaps the activities for which I was ostracized could yet spell an answer. What are you talking about? You know of my dealings with the ethereal realm? I know what you claim. That there exists some otherworldly territory populated by demons and creatures of magic. And that you, Cabadath, can somehow commune with these creatures. Come inside, and I shall explain. Oh, Jesus, it's this room. I've seen this before. Cabadath, what is this madness? In my dealings with the ethereal realm, I have learned of many powerful demons and elementals. But there is one spoken of only reluctantly, a beast possessing of awesome power. You plan to summon a demon? The most terrible of them all, who strikes fear and even the most unflappable creatures that I've spoken with? Unflappable? What? A pain elemental. Indeed, the only pain elemental. Ruler of a desolate wasteland where none venture. An invulnerable, hugely potent beast that feeds on the agony of others. And today is his day. The day when the boundaries between the realms weaken and he glimpses our world. To bring him through at that point should be simple. Even if you could conjure such a thing. How would you have it defend our land? I have much knowledge in the ways of magic. With the correct bindings, any demon can be forced to my will. I completed the preparations while I waited for your return. All that remains is the summoning. Cabadath, it pains me to see you build your hopes on such nonsense. Be silent and watch. You shall see your nonsense soon enough. In this hall of death, and by the light of Belenus's gift, I summon you. I bring you gifts to mark your path. I feed you with pain. I call you with madness. I summon you with the greatest loss. And I bind you by your true name. Chozo. By the gods! I have reached out to you through the void, Chozo. I command you by your true name. Show yourself! Cabadath, please stop this! Show yourself! It's huge! It... it is larger than I... anticipated. But Chozo must obey the rules of magic. It is bound. I can command it. No! It is far more powerful than I thought! Golden, help me! F forgive me, Cabadath. No! Golden, I beg you! Don't let it take me alive! Chozo, of course, has no use for meat. It feeds on pain. It does not kill its prisoners. Cabadath's agony was a particularly rare morsel, and Chozo ensured it would last. His soul was placed inside an oak sapling on the site of his old home to grant his body immortality. 
For five centuries, as the tree grew, he knew torment beyond even his most depraved imaginings. By then, his body was warped and his mind long fallen to soulless dementia. He was Chozo's, utterly and completely his slave. Trilby, Saibon, you were supposed to leave. I couldn't, I just... Abed, the professor, he's dead. I know, he was killed by the shadows. Just like they will kill you if you don't get away from here. What is this place? This cave is the center of the reality shift. This stump is what's causing it all. How? It is the vessel for the soul of the tall man. The acolyte of Chozo. Linkman. Nice to see a friendly face. Amazing, isn't it? Of all the things Sir Roderick could have used to murder his son, he chose that idol. Placing the soul of John Defoe into the wood alongside Capadas. Infusing the poor retard with Chozo's magic, allowing him to come back infinitely more powerful than before. Certainly pretty lucky. Lucky? Chozo had to wait 2,000 years for that opportunity. The opportunity to blend magic and science in a single entity. The opportunity to create the bridge. What are you talking about? The bridge between the realms. Over which Chozo will cross into our universe and purify mankind. Our order has waited 200 years for the prophecy to be fulfilled. You're not with the Ministry of Occultism. Who are you? Two hundred years ago, the Prophet Jack Freyhorn founded the Order of Blessed Agonies. Since then, we have grown, and watched, and waited. It was only in recent years that the events foretold in the Book of Chozo began to occur. It mentioned John Defoe, and it mentioned you. Me? You were the one who... you were the one prophesied to guide the Bridgekeeper to his destiny. But you didn't finish the job. All three aspects of John Defoe had to be destroyed to create the bridge. Body, mind, and soul. You only destroyed his body. His soul and mind remained. Had I known about this, I wouldn't even have done that. That will truly disappoint my superiors. They were quite adamant that I should try to persuade you to join our cause and fulfill your foretold duty. Is that why you were helping me? They thought if I guided you through your visions and showed you the appropriate passages from our holy books, you'd understand that the prophecy is real. You honestly believed I'd join some insane cult just because you handed me some leaflets? Personally? No. A knife in my gut brought an explosion of ice-cold agony. I heard the pitter-patter of my blood on the rocky floor. The pain, the surprise, and my exhaustion went together to cause immediate unconsciousness. I awoke, to find myself splayed upon the stump, blood still slowly leaking from my wound. In my injured state, I could barely move. My limbs refused to respond. I was as weak as a newborn. Lankman? Oh good, you're awake. I was afraid you'd miss this. What are you doing? After your staggering ineptitude and Defoe manner, the Order needs to nudge things along. We need a connection to Chozo to help administrate his coming. And today might be the only opportunity we have all year to summon the Tall Man. You're going to bring that... thing? Into our world? With a standard ritual of blessed agonies and an offering. After he takes your life, he will be grateful to us. And then he will guide us to our destiny. So why did you stab me? What if I'm already dead by the time he gets here? You won't be. Men like you, Trilby, die on their own terms. They don't weakly let their life slip away from one measly knife wound. Hush now. Capadath is coming. Wonderful! I think it's time to save it. Okay. Um... 
I call thee, Kavadaf, to the wood that is your soul. I call thee from the north. Uh, it looks like there's a cross. Can I pick it up? Hold on, let's look around. From my position, I can only see a small portion of the wavering cavern. I could see the idol of John Defoe on the stump beside me, and my bloody waistcoat lying discarded in the corner. Okay. Let's grab idol. Okay. Uh, pick up idol. My attempts to move only made things worse. I felt a stab of pain and something snapped behind my eyes, filling my vision with spots. Shit. Hold on, there's another... Yeah, hold on. With my other senses, I could detect the presence of Saipon and the re redoubtable Linkman. Um... I call thee from the east. Oh, God. Okay, so I can't grab the idol. Just try it again. I was losing blood steadily. My arms and legs were limp and unresponsive. I couldn't move. Okay, so the only thing I can do is talk, I suppose. Talk to... Saipon about what? <laughs> Ab about... Save me! Saibon, are you there? She's here, but she can't answer you. She has nothing to do with this Linkman. Let her go. On the contrary, it is important that all three of us be here. It is part of the ritual. God damn it. I call thee from the south. Okay. I can't reach anything. The pain was now replaced with an ice-cold numbness that was spreading fast. The room was sw swimming before my eyes. Okay, I can't move. I can only talk. Perhaps when he's close to Saipon, she... can, like, trip him or something? I call thee from the west. Oh god. Okay, move closer to her, please. Move close. Okay. Maybe? She doesn't look close enough, to be honest. About. Uh, trip. Lankman? Saibon, are you there? Yep, she can't answer. Oh, what the fuck? What the hell can I possibly do? Oh god. It was becoming harder and harder to breathe. Air rattled in and out of my lungs like a buzzsaw. Should probably save it again. Reality flits from realm to realm, tormented, confused, and this madness that we might bring thee to us. What could I possibly do? What do I have on me? None of that's gonna happen. work. <laughs> End it, Capadeth. I present thee with blessed agonies, body, mind, and soul. My vision was clouding up around the edges. It seemed like my stubborn will was the only thing keeping me alive. What can I possibly do? I can't move. Yeah. The idol of John Defoe. And my bloody waistcoat lying discarded in the corner. Well, I can't do anything with my freaking waistcoat. I can't move. There's gotta be something with the idol, right? I guess I could talk to Linkman. I was unable to speak. Oh, okay. What if I, uh, kick the idol? I was losing blood steadily. My arms and legs were limp and unresponsive. I couldn't- I literally can't move. Wait, I can't move and I can't talk. What the- <laughs> I can't do anything then. Okay. I present thee with the guide. Failed in his duty for thee to judge. Well, I seemingly literally can't do anything. Come. I shall stand here limply. Or lay here limply, rather. Hi. I believe that means I died. 
pretty sure it does. Yeah, okay. Um... I have no ideas. What if I kick the idol right now? Yeah, no, you still can't move. Okay, at least at this point I can still speak. <sighs> Is there like something magical in my coat that I can use? About coat. <sighs> yeah, I guess that's not a relevant topic of conversation, is it? Am I supposed to do something with the coat? Talk to coat. About saving me. Hmm. What if I just touch the idol? Nope. With hand. Use hand on idle. What could I possibly talk to him about? Oh crap, I don't know what that said. I accidentally skipped it. Let's talk to him about the idol. You had the idol of John Defoe all along. I did. I placed it here to reunite the wood with the tree from which it came. Cabadath will appreciate the sentiment. Why is John Defoe the, the bridge? What makes him so special? He was born in the scientific realm and killed with magical wood. The magic brought him back as a wraith. As such, he is an entity of both realms, of both magic and science. One foot on each side of the border. He is the bridge, just as the prophecy said. Okay. That doesn't really help anything. What if I do the same thing? No, just the, the same thing. He doesn't want to elaborate. Oh, that's right, I just skipped the thing saying that he's dying. Right. Um... What if I just kill myself? Because he's worried I'll die before he gets here, right? And he said I live on my own terms, so... Not yet, but I was pretty close. Just reach your hand into your gut wound and just, like, pull. Something bad should happen. Kill self. Hmm. I have no idea. Help me. Help. Right, well that's not going anywhere. Time to look at a walkthrough. Enjoy the white screen. Hmm, let's see. What the f- what? Okay. The walkthrough is... interesting in what it suggests I should do. Very interesting. It says I should talk to the girl. Are you there? I know she's there. And then it says I should talk to Chozo? How is Chozo even here? Why are you summoning the tall man? What possible use could he be to you? You've been experiencing flashbacks, I know. You saw Kavadath's attempt to summon Chozo, yes? Uh-huh. I saw that he failed quite drastically. He assumed our lord could be summoned with any old basic demon summoning rite. But Chozo is far greater and more powerful than his rivals. He is very nearly a god, a god of pain. 
It takes a great amount of magic and a much more complex ritual to summon one such as he. We do not know it, but the tall man does. He will guide us and teach us. Okay, I'm apparently supposed to talk about a book. What does the prophecy say about me? In the Book of Chozo prophecy the creation of John Defoe the Wraith. It states that when his body, mind, and soul are destroyed in conjunction, the bridge between the realms will be created. It also states that you were supposed to guide this process. But we can expect one or two inaccuracies in a prophecy written so long ago. Right. Okay, I was under the impression I couldn't move, but the walkthrough says the next thing to type is move. Okay. That didn't work. This walkthrough is apparently wrong. Move. 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 Do I just need to be quicker? Like, this, this is literally what it says specifically to do. Okay. Punch him! I couldn't move. What if I touch the stump? Is it just too slow? I'm super confused. I have no idea what I have no idea what to do, and apparently the walkthrough doesn't either. Can I move? Or limp and unresponsive? Do I need to do this like in the first second, or I've lost too much blood? I don't, I don't understand. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is the special edition of the game. I think it's so the special edition has an extended end scene. This walkthrough is probably for the standard edition. Shit. Okay. Um. Uh, <laughs> in that case, what the fuck do I do? Alright, hold on, I'm gonna think about this. Okay, I found another walkthrough. I don't know if it's actually for the special edition, but its instructions are a little bit different, so let's try it. It says, wait till the tall man uh, pops up. And as soon as he does, type stand. No, it doesn't work. You can't move at all. I don't understand. Two separate walkthroughs with separate instructions, and neither of them work. I'm very confused. I died. Wait, is, is that what I had to do? I literally just had to wait until, like, the very last second and then type die? I died. Come. Oh, I'm faking dead? Is, is that it? I think maybe I just faked my own death. Oh, hold on. Fuck, I can't save. What? He's dead? No. That's not possible. Master. Master, please. No. No! Trilby? Go back, Trilby. Leave me alone. I'm dead. Not yet. Not fully. Your mind and soul are drifting apart from your body. With enough power, there's still time to pull them back. But you must have the will to return. Forget it. I've had enough. I did the assignments. I made myself useful. I lived up to the reputation Defoe Manor gave me. Today, I gave everything I could. And I still died. There is still work to be done. 
You have not yet completed your duty. I'm sick of duty. I'm sick of prophecy. Just let me sleep. Stronger men than you have tried to fight destiny. None succeeded. Past, present, and future are all different faces of the same die, and few can see them all at once. But I can, and the future demands that you live. Return, now. I have marked the path. Please, just let it end. Pleading to me is useless. I am just as much a prisoner of fate as you. The future your actions are destined to bring about has already taken place. Without your part, I would not be here to restore you to life. So you see, and by my mere presence, your decision is already made. Who are you? A murderer. And a madman. And a puppet of forces neither of us could possibly comprehend. Trilby, say something. What? You're alive. Oh God, I didn't even know if I was doing it properly. But I did it. You're alive. Where's Lankman? That tall man took him. He did something horrible to him. And then he took him away. Where, where's my waistcoat? Shh, don't talk. I've already called for an ambulance. Let's get you back upstairs. Wait. See that wooden idol? Yes. Bring it with us. Wrap it tightly in clothes and bring it with us. Don't let it touch your bare skin. Uh, okay. And now it sits across from me. The reality shift had cleared up, and we were free to leave. An STP cleanup crew arrived with the ambulance. No trace of Abed, or the hotel staff was found. Officially, they've been classified as unexplained disappearances. Lankman and the tall man seem to have also vanished, which does not surprise me in the least. Saipon signed the Official Secrets Act, and last I heard is staying with her parents to recuperate. Which just leaves me to write up my notes, with the idol that haunts my dreams gazing at me from across my desk. I was dead. I can't pretend I wasn't. No amount of CPR could have brought me back from where I was. So who did? The man in red? Who was he? if not an insane hallucination in brain death. Unimportant. I am alive, and that's all that matters. Just that, and the destiny of this wretched statuette that I am apparently fated to carry out. Every instinct in my being wants to burn it to ashes and grind them into the dirt. But I do not. Lankman spoke of a prophecy, that the destruction of John Defoe's soul would somehow help him and his order to summon their dark god. So if I destroy the idol, they win. But what else can I do? I certainly can't keep it. I know from experience that it takes malevolent influence like a... that it leaks malevolent influence like a broken pipe leaks water. The only other option is to hide it. But where can I hide such a thing and ensure that it is never found again by human hands? I shall have to think about this. Trilby. The fulfillment of the prophecy continues. The ritual for the summoning of Chozo will go ahead. Events have been set in motion that cannot be stopped. Ugh. We have the blood of the guide. Now we must wait. Wait and prepare. Hmm. At this time there came a man from the land of technology, and though his wisdom was great and his power advanced, he had the willfulness of his fellows, and so he was the arrogant man. Oh my god, there's a lot to read. And on the eighth and twentieth day of the seventh month of the year, and the arrogant... Oh my god, I can't keep up. Forget it.
What is this? Ah, but should any man interfere with the tree that is your soul on the day that is mine, I shall lend you the power to strike them down with vengeance. The Book of Chozo, Book of the Prince, Chapter 2. I think that's the highest resolution image of Trilby I've ever seen. And that's him in all of his glory in his finest moment. As he's dying. Whew, alright. Well, there ends part three of the four-part Chozo Mythos. So... Let's take a look at it. Let's talk about it a bit, especially compared to the previous games. So, in terms of gameplay, it's very different because it's switched over to using a text parser compared to the old point-and-click interface. So, very different. And that was really interesting for me to see because I've never actually played a game that uses uh, text parsing in any extensive way. See if anything happens here. The game's probably just gonna awkwardly close. I hope it goes to the menu. Please go to the menu. Okay, thank god. So yeah, it was interesting for me to play this. Given the type of gameplay it has, because I've never played a game that has extensive text parsing before. It was very interesting. However, I must admit that I now am pretty much convinced that text parsing is kind of horrible. I hated it, to be honest. Absolutely loathed it. It's... It makes interacting with the game just incredibly cumbersome. I feel like I'm trying to play a game with, like, one hand and one foot and one tongue tied behind my back. It's incredibly uncomfortable. And it leads to some really ridiculous, frustrating situations. Simple things where I didn't even know how to use a gun or didn't even know how to pick up an item in front of me because I didn't know its name. Yeah, I don't like text parsing. I really don't. But it was interesting to experience it. And there's one good thing I can say about text parsing. As a method of interaction with a game. It's... It feels surprisingly satisfying to actually do something through text parsing. To actually type the letters. And have the game recognize what you're trying to say and then actually perform that action. It's actually surprisingly satisfying. But that that doesn't wear, that doesn't anywhere near make up for how incredibly cumbersome and annoying it was to interact with things. So, surprisingly satisfying. I guess there's just something about actually typing it that makes it feel more, I don't know, meaningful? But yeah, I don't like text parsing. I don't think it's a good way to interact with the game. It's pretty horrible. At least... In this incarnation of it, I suppose it is. I mean, you know, 20 years down the line or something, if you have a, some extremely intelligent text parser, then maybe it could work. I also feel like the text parsing kind of took away from 
the amount of things that you could examine in the environment. Not that it needs to, but rather I think as a necessity of design, I think... I'm kind of guessing here, but I'm thinking as a necessity of making things simpler because it's harder to interact with stuff, that perhaps that's the reason there was less stuff to interact with. I don't actually know if that's true. Perhaps it was just that they didn't want as many things to interact with. But... Yeah, I'm thinking... I'm thinking the perhaps simplified the number of things that you can interact with as a way of ensuring, or, well, it definitely didn't ensure, but as a way of helping the player not to get stuck. Or spend an hour trying to interact with something that didn't actually matter. So there definitely seemed to be less things to touch and examine. You know, it's mostly examine a room, and then there's a couple things in the room you can examine, and that's pretty much it. So I kind of miss that, because that's one of my most favorite things to do in adventure games, is click on everything. You know, click on that photo, click on that separate photo, click on the window, click on every glass and every bottle and everything. And here a description for it. But here you couldn't really do that. You could just examine the room and then examine a couple key objects and that's pretty much it. So, I feel like that was probably a result of the text parsing. Perhaps it wasn't. Regardless, I kind of missed that from this game compared to the previous ones. But now on to the story. The story was extraordinary. I always thought that's been the the high point in these games. It's the reason I keep playing it, because I definitely, I really don't like the gameplay at all. It's got a big heaping ton of adventure game ridiculousness in the puzzles. It's It's not so much that the puzzles don't make any sense for the most part. I think it's more just that the... I don't know how to explain it. The text parsing certainly didn't help. But, anyway, yeah, despite the uh, the puzzles definitely not being any fun for me whatsoever, other than a little bit of... a little bit of feeling um, satisfied when the text parser actually recognized what I said, but aside from that, I was just playing through the puzzles really just to get to the story, and it was absolutely worth it. Again, it's always been the strong point of this series, I feel, is the story and the characters and stuff like that. And that's no exception here. In fact, I feel like this game has a way better story than the previous ones ever did. Not that the previous ones were bad, they were quite good, but this one took it to another notch. A whole nother level. It was really extraordinary the way it... The way it shifted between different realities and also completely different time periods, going further and further back, tracing the history of the wood that's caused so much pain and so much misery. Going from the newest victim back and back and back from the crate to the the idol to the tree it was really amazing such an interesting way to tell a story and very effective so yeah i thought the story was exceptional absolutely exceptional and i really look forward to see what they do for the fourth and final game in the chozo mythos series Alright, so I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.